Have you been asked to calculate sales and fixed costs in a situation like this and you're not sure how to do it? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to show you how easy it is to calculate those in today's video. But first, I want to say I believe something wonderful is about to happen for you, so be on the lookout for it. And now, back to the video. I did a prior video in which I did a whole bunch of companies such as this where we calculated everything from variable cost to contribution margin, fixed costs. And if you missed that video, I've linked it up here for you. Today's video is a breakdown of one of those situations, and that would be Firm D. I want to go into detail on that so I can make sure that you know how to find the sales and the fixed costs when you know variable costs, contribution margin, and the operating income, or in this case, it's a loss. Remember, when it's in parentheses like this, in accounting, that means it's a negative number, so this company is losing money in this situation. All right, we've got a couple formulas here that are going to be helpful. We've got contribution margin is equal to sales minus variable costs. We've got also contribution margin ratio is equal to sales minus variable costs all over sales. I want to remind you that contribution margin is going to be in dollars, and it's the amount of dollars from the sales after variable costs are taken care of that are going toward your operating income. And in this case, it's we're looking at aggregate sales and aggregate fixed costs and aggregate variable costs. So it's not a per unit cost, it's for the total sales and the total variable costs. Variable costs, of course, just like it says, vary with the amount of sales. So as sales go up, variable costs are gonna go up. Contrast that to fixed costs, which are static. They don't change dependent upon sales. So think of rent as an example. It doesn't matter to your landlord how many things you sell, or if you don't sell anything at all, your rent is going to stay the same. So that's what we're talking about with fixed costs by one example of it. So contribution margin, that's going to be in the form of dollars. On the other hand, contribution margin ratio is a percentage. It's a percentage. What percentage of sales contribute toward our operating income? We've already got a percentage here of contribution margin of 23%, but I wanted to make that distinction because as we're going through this, I want to also find out the contribution margin. And I want it in dollar amounts. All right, let's dig into this. We don't know the sales and we don't know the fixed costs, but we do know variable costs and we know the contribution margin ratio. And ultimately we do know that the company lost $4,930. The first thing let's look at is this formula here, contribution margin ratio. I'm gonna abbreviate that as CMR. And we know that is equal to the sales minus the variable costs. But where do we also see sales minus variable costs? We see that here. In other words, this numerator is the same as this. And this sales minus variable costs is equal to the contribution margin. I'm going to abbreviate that as CM. So sales minus variable costs is our contribution margin. And we know up here we get sales minus variable costs. So I can substitute in, I can replace sales versus variable cost with contribution margin. And our, our denominator here is sales. I'm going to leave sales as our denominator. So our contribution margin ratio can be reflected as contribution margin divided by sales. So I've just kind of combined these two formulas to get to that. Now, since we know that, how can we use that to help us? Well, let's do a little bit more rearranging of this. So if I take sales, I'm going to rewrite this because I want to move it around some. I've got contribution margin ratio is equal to contribution margin over sales. 
and I want to get contribution margin by itself. So I can get rid of the sales by doing a little bit of algebra. And since it's in the denominator, I'm just going to multiply the right hand by sales. And if I do that, then I got to multiply the left hand by sales. And if I do that, the sales and that sales cancel out because it's in the numerator here. It's in the denominator there, so they cancel out. So I wind up with, on the left-hand side, I'm going to rewrite this as contribution margin ratio times sales. I just reverse the order just to make it clearer. And anytime you're multiplying, you can change the order around. And that is equal to our contribution margin. Our contribution margin is also equal to sales minus variable costs. So let's see what we can do with that. So we know that contribution margin is equal to sales minus variable costs. If I, I've got two different ways now to find contribution margin, let's combine them. I can put down contribution margin is equal to contribution margin. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, because it's the same. Either way we get to there, our contribution margin is going to be the same. So if I set them equal to each other, now I can substitute. On the left-hand side, I'm going to have contribution margin ratio times sales, because that's contribution margins equal to over here. Bring down my equal sign, and on this side, the contribution margin is equal to sales minus variable costs. So I'm going to write that down, sales minus variable costs. So I've now created a new combined formula where contribution margin ratio times sales is equal to sales minus the variable costs. I don't know what sales are. So if we're doing algebra, let's call that x. All right, sales, we're just going to call it x because that's a variable. We don't know what it is. So I can rewrite this as contribution margin ratio times x is equal to x, because our sales is x, minus our variable cost. So I've now refined our a little bit more. What do we know? We know the contribution margin ratio, that is 23%. We're given that. That's a given. And if I've got 23%, I can change that to a decimal 0.23. Right? If you don't remember how to change a decimal, a percentage, I've got a video linked up here to help you remember how to do that. So our contribution margin ratio is 0 0.23, because that's what we're given. Our sales are x, so I got 0 0.23 times x is equal to, and I've got the x minus, and do we know what variable costs are? Yes, we've been given variable cost, so I can write that down as 57,000 because we were given that. So the only thing left is this x. So let's do a little bit more rearranging. I want to get the 57,000 on the other side so it becomes positive. So I'm going to add 57,000 to both sides. It has an x, this does not. So I'm going to rewrite this as 0 0.23x plus 57,000 is equal to, and the only thing left here is x. Let's get our x's together. What's the relationship here? We're adding it, so to get rid of it, I'm going to subtract 0.23x from both sides. Remember, there's an invisible one in front of the x here, right? Anytime you've got the x with nothing else, there's an invisible one. So on this side, the 0.23x minus 0.23x is 0. I don't have to write that down. I can bring down the 57,000 equals. And then I've got the 1. I'm going to subtract out the 0.23. I'll use my BA2 plus calculator just to be sure. So, And if you want one of these, I've got a link down in the description. And it's also on the screen. I'm going to put in my invisible 1. I'm going to make it a real 1 now. And I'm going to subtract out 0.23. That gives me 0.77x. The next step is I want to get this x by itself. The relationship between the 0.77 and x is multiplication. So I do the opposite and I divide. And if I divide one side by 0.77, 
I have to do it to the other side. So my x is equal to, let's write this in here, let's put this in here, 57,000 divided by 0.77 is equal to 74,025.97. And there's some other numbers in there, but we can just round it to 0.97. That is our X, which is sales. So I can put that up here as sales. Sales are 74,025.97. I'm getting really close to being complete. The other thing I need to figure out is what is my contribution margin? I'd like to find that in terms of a dollar figure. And the easiest way to do that is my sales minus variable costs. We know that sales minus variable costs is equal to contribution margin. That's in our formula. I have sales of 74,025.97. I've got that already in the calculator. That's my sales. I'm going to subtract from that the 57,000 in variable costs. And that gives me contribution margin in terms of dollars. Is the contribution margin is $17,025.97. That's my contribution margin. We know that contribution margin minus fixed costs is equal to our operating income or loss. We know the contribution margin. We don't know the fixed costs. So if I can rearrange this to get fixed costs by itself, what am I going to do? I'm going to add fixed costs to both sides. So on this side, I've got contribution margin. This went away is equal to operating income plus fixed costs. Let's get the operating income on the other side. So I'm going to subtract operating income from both sides. So I wind up with a formula, contribution margin minus operating income is equal to fixed costs. Now let's fill in what we have. Our contribution margin is $17,025.97. I'm going to subtract because we're subtracting it, and we have a contribution margin that's negative. So I'm subtracting a negative, 4,930, and that's going to equal our fixed costs. What happens if we subtract a negative? That's right, we're adding. So I have $17,025.97. I'm adding to it a 4,930 to get my fixed costs. I have that already in the calculator, the $17,025.97. I'm going to add to it the $4,930. And that gives me fixed costs equal $21,955.97. We can write that in as our fixed costs. And that makes sense because if our fixed costs are more than our contribution margin, we're going to wind up with a loss. In other words, we're losing money. We have a negative amount of money in our income, and that makes sense. So we have found our sales and our fixed costs in this situation. That is all I have for you in this video. You can share this with someone who might benefit from it. Also, you can become a member. There's a membership if you hit the Join button. There are special perks for members, including special members-only videos, early access to videos, and priority in getting your questions answered. Also, don't forget, the best benefits come from the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Now go make it an awesome day. Thank you.